The air was cold, crisp. It helped soothe my nerves. I leaned against the front door and rubbed my face with a trembling hand. I'm so glad he's okay. I don't know what I'd have done if he didn't wake up. I flopped on the front step and leaned my head against the post. Ugh. I shouldn't have lost my temper. Stupid. I mean, you were operating on like two hours of sleep, ten cups of coffee, worry, and you have two vampires fighting over you, so I think you're allowed to be a little cranky. A morning after not sleeping at all was probably not a good time to try to deal with explaining this to him. I was cranky, tired, and stressed. At least you're aware of this. It wasn't a good combo. I shut my eyes and took a long, slow breath. Autumn had definitely fully set in. I listened to the leaves rustling through the branches. I should be more patient with him. Now that he knows the truth, we'll be able to work things out. It'll be a long road, I'm sure, but we'll be able to progress. Just have to make him talk to me. Have to make him trust me. Soothed by the cool air and sound of the trees, I started to doze off. If he'll just tell me what happened. The sun was playing through my eyelids, but everything grew fuzzy as I drifted off. There was music. Singing. Voices. Come away, O oh human child, to the waters and the wild. Am I dreaming again? I thought we were getting fairy music. I know that poem. This wasn't like the dreams I'd been having lately. It wasn't dark or cold. It was warm and there were voices all around me. I was walking. Going... Where was I going? What was the rest of that poem? Where was I? Nora! Oh, thank goodness. So I started to sleepwalk during the day for once. I jolted awake the moment someone said my name. I was standing at the end of my driveway near the street. Sleepwalking. Again. <laughs> Yo, I'm here with my sunglasses. I looked behind me to see Mark standing there eyeing me curiously. Did my hair go white? What were you doing? I don't... <laughs> I can't with these guys and their sunglasses. <laughs> they just look like they're part of a boy band to me. I don't know what it is. I mean, the gloves and the hands doesn't help Adrian's case at all. I feel like we just need Elliot in the middle with sunglasses as well. And just, I don't know. I need a good boy band name for these vampires. <laughs> uh, uh, so good. Backstreet vamps. I don't know. I realized that beyond him, leaning on the open door of his silver car, which was parked in my driveway, was Adrian. I tried to shake off the grogginess as I looked at them both. What are you doing here? What do you think? Checking up on the Spencer situation? Of course. And seeing how you're faring as well. I see he left a bruise. Yeah. How did you explain that one to your mom? I touched my cheek awkwardly. I bruise easily. It's not a big deal. I mean, it is. But we have other things to worry about. In any case, I'm okay. Allie's talking to Spencer. I needed some fresh air. He raised an eyebrow. Are you alright? Yeah. It's... Um... It's kind of a long story. I sleepwalk, apparently. <laughs> I fell asleep on the porch. Didn't sleep last night. Apparently I was going to go for a little walk. Walking into the street while asleep is not generally wise. I'll be sure to let my sleeping self know that. I brought someone else to see you. He tipped his head toward Adrian. Have you guys made up? I... I hope you don't mind. <laughs> Keep his hands to himself. I mean... I assume you're here to, like, apologize. 
You guys are like hanging out now, are you? Is that what's is that what's happening? Did you guys bond? <laughs> I mean, great if you did. But uh, well, all right. Mark brought him here for a purpose, so. No, of course not. I'm a little surprised, though. I mean, you know, you two drove all the way here without eating each other en route. But hey, that's an improvement, so I'm not complaining. Exactly. They can get along, we can stop with the whole Adrian following us everywhere thing. What is this fixation with vampires and cannibalism? I wouldn't call it a fixation, per se. It is definitely at least bordering on fixation. You keep bringing it up. Not my fault you guys eat people. We don't eat people. Eh, close though. You two are surprisingly close, aren't you? People keep saying that. It's only because this lunatic hates Shakespeare and needed my expert help with it. Yes, that's it. It is it. Why are you even pretending otherwise? Ugh. Please. Stop talking. This is my house. You don't get to tell me that in front of my house. <laughs> anyway. How was the conversation with Spencer going? Well, they're probably better now that I'm not in there. Walk in, see that Spencer's drowned Allie. He's still being all weird about me. But he's fine with Allie. Yeah, I guess. Sort of? She's kind of bullying him into being okay with her. Perhaps one of us should go check on them. Feel free. I'm staying out here. If I'm in the same room with him, I'm probably going to start strangling people. That would be unfortunate. I'll go. I sort of need to apologize anyway. Sure. I trusted Allie to supervise that meeting. Adrian was wearing his gloves anyway. I walked into the front door and let him in. Mark stayed on the porch with me. I flopped down again, yawning. <sighs> to my surprise, Mark sat next to me. Just how long have you been sleepwalking like that? Oh, that. Well, since we got back here, I guess. I have a thing that keeps me in my room at night, though. A thing? A potion. Allie gave it to me. I see. What's wrong? Nothing. He looked away, frowning. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? I thought we had something special. <laughs> Mark, at the point that I told Allie I had known you for like two days. <laughs> okay. I'm telling you now. I, I'm very proud that Nora did not hide the fact at all. Not even in front of Adrian. She's being, like, very forthcoming this route, uh, which I really like. You... didn't tell me something like that was happening. Well, there was no reason to. That's the reason you haven't been sleeping well. More or less. I tend to sort of wake myself up in the middle of the episode, so... But, hey, I'm not waking up outside anymore, so that's a plus. Considering how ridiculously dangerous that is, I'd say so. Then... Is that why you didn't sleep last night? Oh, yeah. I woke up in the middle of Spencer's room talking to myself, then thought I was seeing the shadows move or whatever. Didn't sleep much after that. I see. So... You and Adrian are getting along. That's good, right? I wouldn't go that far. He's simply relieved we're helping him keep this incident from Velos. Yeah, I imagine he is. I was surprised you agreed. Yesterday you were quite upset. I was a bit panicked, yeah. I mean, to be fair, I had no idea what was going on. He's a pain, but he's still my brother. And... And? Well, I just felt guilty. Him getting hurt because of me again. I kept thinking things like, what if he never woke up? Or what if he woke up and hated me even more? 
Yesterday's incident was not because of you. Thank you, Mark. If it wasn't for me, he wouldn't be remotely involved with the club or its members. He met Adrian because of me. I suppose that part is true. And speaking of that, I wish to relay something to you. Please, do relay to me. Oh? I don't know if it's pertinent to your research, but I spoke with Adrian at length yesterday, and he happened to mention something that caught my notice. Related to my research? Perhaps. He noticed that Spencer's life energy is quite different from yours, which did initially beg the question how he had managed to sample yours. Oh, that. Had to be in the club the other day. He just accidentally touched my hand. No big deal. Adrian has the ability to somewhat sense the properties of an individual's life energy, but he did admit he had accidentally absorbed some of yours. Well, apparently I, I'm not to his taste, so... He mentioned that as well. He said your life energy is rather potent. Potent and exceptionally pure to the point it burns. Huh. The purity thing is due to being Fey, right? Yes, but Fey also typically have very weak life energy as well. Oh, so that's why he was confused. He'd said something about me not being weak like other fairies or something. I had no idea what the heck he meant at the time. He said the strength of yours is similar to the strength of a normal human's life energy, which is, needless to say, unusual. He also happened to mention that your brother's life energy is far purer than a normal human, though not to the level of a fae. Interesting. He speculated that perhaps you and Spencer are both... half fairy. That's not a thing. I mean, my understanding is that no matter your heritage, you're either fully fey or fully human. I told him that. But it begs the question why you and your brother have life energy that is somewhere in between. <laughs> Alright, Mark. Give me some new stuff to chew on. Let's see. Humans... I think this is a new one. Like everything else, the paranormal reeks... I think it's reeks. Reeks? Rex? Reeks? Complete havoc on the topic of genetics the moment it rears its head. For those of us with a fey heritage, it's totally possible to have a single fairy ancestor ten generations back, and yet still end up completely, totally, and in all ways, fairy. On top of that, so many outside forces can impact how your fey traits assert themselves. Where you live, if you're exposed to magic, if you're raised according to human ways instead of fairy ways, all these things can completely change the way your heritage behaves. It's as if being fey isn't some solid thing, but some kind of amorphous, malleable state of being that changes on a whim. Not as clear as mud it is. That is a little weird. Adrian suggested that it might be due to some sort of twin bond. Is that a thing? It wouldn't be unheard of. There are instances where one person's energy or aura may affect another's. His theory was that if Spencer is human, then he may somehow be pulling your energy more to the human side, while you as a fairy pull his more toward the fae side. Hmm. But of course, the reason could be something else entirely. Perhaps something to do with your past experiences. If my life energy burned Adrian, then what did Spencer's do? It clearly didn't burn him, since he didn't exactly let go immediately. Maybe he just tasted super gourmet. Though, I was just guessing that purity improved taste. Could be wrong on that. At any rate, this could be entirely useless information, but I wanted to let you know. No, thanks for telling me. It gives me another thing to look up. I'm guessing Adrian never encountered something like this before, even before the glove rule came into effect. He gave me a sharp look. I shrugged. 
I got the story from Allie. She told me not to tell you I knew, but I'm really starting to hate secrets. And I don't see a problem with me knowing what happened. I see. So she told you that story. I'm not going to make you talk about it. There's not much to discuss anyway. It's already two years in the past. But everyone is clearly still feeling the repercussions. You don't need to feel sorry for me. It's not that. I just... I guess I just understand some things a little better now. I'm sorry that you were dragged in the middle of it all and that it ended up causing problems for you. It's caused problems for Spencer more than me. As if what happens to him doesn't affect you. Well, that's true. He stood and brushed off his pants. But to answer your question, it doesn't seem so. Interesting. I stood as well. Come on, let's go see how it's going in there. I think I can probably talk to Spencer again without it devolving into shouting. If he gets too loud, we can have Adrian knock him out again. Please, no. I don't think I can handle another night sleeping in his room. Mark just teased. I opened the front door, letting us both in. We could hear voices coming from the kitchen, but everyone sounded calm. That was a good sign. I led Mark that direction. He looked around curiously, and I wondered if he'd ever been in a house this small before. <laughs> Well, hello, everybody. When we reached the kitchen, everyone was seated around the table. Spencer was looking decidedly more awake and less disheveled. They all looked up as we entered. So, how's it going? Well, now that you're not here threatening strangulation... I can start again. Please don't. So, you know everything now? Well... I guess I've had my suspicions confirmed. I cautiously made my way to the table and pulled a chair out. So what now? Well, now we introduce him to Vilos. We still don't really know much about what's going on with him. Probably should get an expert opinion. In the meantime, you two have to promise to not fight about this. Your parents still can't know about it. If you would just tell me what happened five years ago... I can tell you if you want to know, but I'm not sure it'll answer the questions you say you have. You won't know until you try. Then I guess we'll leave you two alone. Unless you think you need a referee. Before you go, I want to ask one thing. Will I be able to... help with the research? What? If you really don't remember what happened, then all we have to go on is my word. Even if I tell you... He shrugged. But now that I know about all this, I can help with your research, right? Well, I guess. I couldn't argue there. And really, I'd been talking to various people about helping. Now that Spencer knew everything, he could do it. I think it's a good idea. You'll find answers, and Spencer will also learn about, well, everything. I guess so. I still want to hear your version of events, though. Fine. But yeah, you three should probably be gone before Mom or Dad get back. They probably have trouble believing you all three showed up to wish Spencer well. We'll go out through here. All right, broski, you and me. She and the other two left through the back door. I shut the door behind them, leaning my head against it. I felt a little like I was being left alone with the enemy. I turned around and met his eyes. So, about five years ago. <laughs> Chapter six, changelings. We're just gonna do it right from chapter six, huh? All right, well, let's go. Aw, oh, you skipped over the brother-sister talk. Boo. <laughs> I wanted to see them bonding. I wonder if in this route we'll have like the most 
relationship fixing with our brother out of all the ones we've done so far because he's learning so early instead of right at the end. I'm not opposed to this. And this is the club room. I have been here before, you know. True story. You and Nora have both been unconscious in this room before. Have I seen you do this pose before, Allie? I don't remember you doing that yet. That's not exactly something we're going to bond over. <sighs> you two are both so cranky today. It's been a rough couple of days. I don't know why I'm expected to be happy about all of this. You finally learned the secret! You've been on about Nora hiding things from you. Well, now you know what she's been hiding. You should be glad, right? I know what she's been hiding for the last couple of weeks. That doesn't mean I know anything about the last five years. He's been saying cheery things like that since yesterday, but still refuses to give me any details about what actually happened. He doesn't believe I don't remember. Spencer! Ugh, you two. Come on, let's just go to the library. Felis is waiting. Anyway, how exactly does that door thing work? You want the technical explanation? That would be nice, yes. Well? Too bad. I couldn't explain it fully if I wanted to. Spatial magic is not my forte. I only grasp the basics. Cute. Aw, you think I'm cute? Ugh, are you going to be doing that the whole time? Maybe. Wonderful. Anyway, Spencer. I can tell you that the portal is connected to different places in real space, and the connection is initiated by a series of knocks or commands that you perform prior to opening it. I guess you can think of it like a phone. The knocks and incantations function like dialing a number. Once you've done them, the portal tries to connect with the other location. When a connection is established, you can walk through safely. Except it's like a phone where if you forget to dial or get a wrong number before you walk through, you die. Yes, but most people don't forget to do that. There's even a sign reminding you to knock. Yeah, well, that's new. <laughs> don't give me that look. Your fault. Your fault, thank you very much. So you nearly died walking through this door? Once. Anyway, come on. She knocked carefully, glancing back at me. I made a face at her as she opened the door. Spencer was decidedly less impressed by the library than I originally had been. That's because he has no taste. He simply looked around with a deep frown creasing his brow. Interesting. Philos was waiting for us at his desk. Fortunately, he'd already been given a basic rundown of what had happened yesterday, minus the part about Adrian. So this is the brother? Yep, this is the brother. That remains to be seen. Philos gave me a questioning look. He's convinced I'm not really his sister, because I'm all magical and he's not, or whatever. I am afraid to tell you, but you may well be all magical as well, you know. You mean I could actually be... whatever she is? Fate traits awaken slowly. Just because you appear to be human now doesn't mean you will remain so. I haven't considered the possibility that maybe our life energy was weird because we were at different stages of awakening. Hmm... Spencer didn't look too happy about the idea of being Faye, but I had to admit I was silently gloating. After five years of being told I was a monster, it was nice for him to be told he might be in the same boat. Blech. Isn't there some kind of definitive way to tell? Someone hasn't come up with a test to identify the type of cryptic heritage a person might have. It doesn't show up in blood work, Spencer. Otherwise, normal society would have noticed these things by now. He shot me an annoyed look. 
Yeah, yeah, glare all you want. You're just mad that you're being forced to interact with me. It's normal for him to have questions, Nora. You did too, you know. What about... files at the agency you work for? Our files? The event five years ago. You have to have a file on that, right? I can't imagine that something like that happened and your agency didn't remotely get involved in it. There is a file on you. There is?! I honestly hadn't even considered that possibility. Why had I not considered that? Yeah, I'm with you there, Nora. I feel kind of dumb now. Can we see it? It's unlikely they turn it over to you for inspection, but I have taken a look at it. Right after your sister was inducted into the club. You never told me that. I didn't particularly see a need. There was nothing of interest in it anyway. How can that possibly be the case, given the events that took place? The event five years ago coincided with a rash of other disappearances around town. I don't know if you're aware of that. Most of the other people that went missing were never found. When you returned, the agency briefly looked into the situation, and quickly ruled out a connection. At the time, the focus was on attempting to locate the other missing persons. By the time someone was free to look at your case again, your family had left town. It was marked unsolved, and as the two of you were no longer in this jurisdiction, no further looking into it was done. So you really have nothing on her, is that is what you're saying? Velos raised an eyebrow as he gazed at Spencer over the top of his glasses. For the record, the file is on you both. The library door opened again, and this time Mark came through. He had wanted to help his research, and frankly, I was glad for the distraction. Spencer was getting on my last nerve with his nastiness. I waved to Mark as he joined us at the counter. I have one more question for you. And that is... You said there's a chance I'm... Faye. Or whatever. But that means there's a chance I'm not, right? Of course. There's as much a chance that the Fey heritage only passed to your sister, leaving you as a normal human being, albeit one with a sensitivity to magic. Is there a chance that Nora and I aren't related at all? Oh my god, I'm going to go find some books to read! I was so over his accusations. It had really been stupid of me to, to assume that telling him the truth would in any way affect his opinions about me. It would be faster for me to retrieve them for you. No. I think I'd rather go find them personally. I'll go with you. <sighs> I mean, he likes a sassy, independent woman, so... I am capable of finding books myself, you know. Is it that difficult to believe? I simply wanted to help you. I like that Spencer looks uncomfortable because we're flirting, and Allie's like, "Oh yeah. I'm just saying that your help isn't required. Help doesn't have to be required for one to offer it. Besides, what happens if the books are on the top shelf? There are step ladders. I can only imagine how you'd find a way to fall off and break something. I'm nowhere near that clumsy. Are they always like this? Yeah, I think it's their weird way of flirting. It is. We are not flirting. Indeed. Fine, fine, you're totally not flirting. I believe it. <laughs> Vilos is like, oh god. Teens. For your information... I thought we were going to look for more books. Fine, fine. I shot Allie an annoyed look and left her there with Spencer. Mark followed quietly behind me. <laughs>